We've seen a lot of our fellow builders trying to come up with different ways to hold the airplane once it gets to a certain stage. And we've seen some pretty interesting contraptions and some really big uh, wooden structures to build what we call the rotisserie. Um, we didn't put a ton of thought into it. We're like, maybe we'll do a rotisserie, maybe we won't. So how long after we did the big join did we decide, you know what, we are definitely going to do the rotisserie? Uh, about four and a half seconds. About four and a half seconds. We had our friend come over on our big join day, and we had this on the uh, channel a while back. Uh, big milestone. We joined the tail to the fuselage, got the Clecos in, and realized, yeah, I now see why we need the rotisserie. We need it. <laughs> Looked over and said, wait, we have my friend here to help. Um, let's hop in the truck, drive down to Harbor Freight, and let's make this happen. Uh, we had seen a few videos online, uh, mainly Andrew Kilroy's video, which uh, his videos missing a critical angle that and, that I needed. So I had questions myself. I figured, all right, we're just going to dive in and figure this out. So at Harbor Freight, you go buy two of their $99 engine stands. Sometimes they go on sale, so keep an eye on it. Maybe you can get a deal on it. Um, they make bigger ones. You want the, the, the smaller Small. $99 one. It's all you need. Uh, two of them, so we're $200 in. Then we needed to build the structure that will attach to the engine mount so we can get the rotisserie. So we started raiding our scrap lumber. Uh, luckily, we had everything we need. I've seen lots of different configurations and different ways you can go about it, but for us, we started with uh, on the firewall side, uh, on the, fr the front of the airplane. We started with uh, four... Four by fours. Pieces of four by four. And the thing that you have to consider is there's stuff hanging off the front of your firewall that you need this uh, mount to clear. Uh, the battery box, you're going to have your brake uh, fluid. You want to make sure you get far enough in, uh, you get those things attached, because you're going to block yourself from them. So you want the, the brake reservoir is the big one that you want to make sure you have in place before you do the rotisserie. Or you just take it off while you get to that step. So four by fours, um, and it attaches on, on the same mountain location that your engine mount's gonna attach to. So you know it's gonna be strong, because if it- It better be. It better be, because the engine's <laughs> gonna be attached there. And which is the front of the four longer ons. So you've got your four longer ons running around the top and bottom, um, going down the whole length of the airplane. It's the main structure of the airplane. Great place to attach the rotisserie to. So then we get um, these uh, three quarter inch bolts um, from Home Depot that are nice and long. Um, three quarter inch, nice and long um, bolts from Home Depot. Three quarter, three eighths. Three eighths. Three eighths inch. Uh, just Home Depot hardware. Now the trick with this is, because we did this backwards the first time, you want the, um, the head of the bolt on the inside of the airplane and the thread sticking out the front. If you do it reverse, you're going to end up with threads inside the longer on and it's going to block some access to some rivets that you're going to need to set. It's going to block some access to other things that when you go paint, it, it's just in the way. So turn it around through the inside of the airplane, push it forward, threads out the firewall, and then lock it down with a washer. Uh, you know, you're gonna drill holes through the four by fours. Then once you have the, the four by fours on, you're going to put a two by four across them. Like a brace. Like a brace. So your uppers are connected and then you do the same on the lower. So you've got your upper part connected, your lower part connected. Now you need to connect those two four by fours with something. You can use a sheet of plywood or what we did is we inherited some um, cabinets cabinets from um, uh, and like, we like just, just used the doors off. Yeah. Of so when we inherited these cabinets, we stripped them down, took the doors off, flipped them over, put caster wheels on them, and they made good workbenches for us. And we had the stack of doors just sitting in a pile ready for the trash company to pick up. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, this would be perfect. So we just pulled those out, screwed them onto the two by fours, which gave us a good mount in place that we can mount the engine mount to, drill the holes through that, 
put all the bolts through, tighten it up, and the front is ready to go. Now on the back, we just took a two by four, went right down the channel where the vertical stabilizer is gonna mount. And there are four, um, well, there's more than four, but we only used four mounting spots and we just found some Home Depot hardware that fit the holes um, and secured the um, four by four to the, um, the, the aft of the airplane where the vertical stabilizers is gonna mount. Then we're able to secure the cabinet door to that four by four using uh, wood screws. Um, everything did a little countersinking on some of the stuff so nothing was out of, out of uh, protruding out. Then we're able to mount the engine mount to um, that door. Now we have the front and back done. The last thing you have to think about is how you're gonna do the center of balance. Um, this took us a little trial and error. Um, and we ended up uh, on, the back kind of doesn't matter. Uh, you can raise and lower that and it's not too bad. So you get two things to consider when you're trying to figure out where you're gonna center your rotation at. One is clearance. You wanna be able to rotate it over and remember you have Clico sticking out in different places. So you want it high enough up that when it rotates that it's, it's not gonna rub against the ground. Um, you kind of have to work hard to have it rub against the ground, but um, you just gonna have to play with that. But if you over optimize for staying away from the ground, now your center of gravity is way off and it becomes, once you get past 90 degrees, it takes a lot of muscle and a lot of stress to complete the rotation. So what we found is, and I measured it, it's around about just under nine inches, about eight and three quarters uh, inch from the very bottom of the bottom skin on the Ford uh, firewall to where the center of rotation is gonna be on the, uh, the engine mount. Um, or the other way to look at it is right at the top of that tunnel. There's that uh, center tunnel, and then at the top of that is a outlet for uh, where the fuel's gonna flow. My center of rotation is almost dead on with that fuel outlet and it's a pretty natural um, balance. It Smooth motion. Doesn't take, we can, uh, one person can rotate it. Uh, we leave the locking pins in, uh, like you see it's rotated behind us right now at 45 degrees. So we're able to rotate it 45 degrees and put a locking pin in. And I'm comfortable if I'm out here by myself, uh, pulling both pins when it's horizontal, walk into the front, rotating it to the position I need, put the pin in the front, walk to the back, put the pen in the back. Um, half the time we don't even need the pen in the back. But um, it, we're not 100% comfortable rotating it 100% inverted, but we can go about 45 degrees in the inverted position, which we will spend a lot of time working on it in that position because we can get up inside the airplane and do some uh, work in that way. Especially since we're working on systems yep. up in there. Now, taking it on and off is uh, not that bad. Uh, we probably at the point where we need three people holding the fuselage and one person to slide the engine mount on and off. Um, they have a, a snap ring that locks it in place. And once you pull that snap ring off, you can, once you take the weight off of it, you can just slide the engine mount out, um, have two people holding the fuselage up front, Someone go in the back, slide it out the back, and then gently put it down. Not everything that you need to do can you do on the uh, rotisserie. So there are some times that you're gonna take it off. I know we took it off for a couple weeks. Yeah, when we were working back in the tail cone. Yeah, I had to kind of climb way back in the tail cone. There's just no way I was gonna get in there with the rotisserie. Um, Call your friends over and yep. have a plane moving party. Yep and put, them, put your friends to work. That's half, half the battle of doing a build. Um, the other thing that um, you know, I've heard people asking questions about, is it bad to have it on the rotisserie long term? No. It's like if the, if the airplane structure cannot handle being on the rotisserie, I don't think I would fly in this airplane. Um, you're not putting any stress on it that is, um, that the airplane's not gonna encounter 
when it's on its landing gear, uh, static, or when it's in the air flying. Um, can you leave it at a, um, or a rotated angle? Of course. It's, again, it's, uh, it's very, very strong. Um, the other thing is, at what point can you put it on a rotisserie? We put it on the rotisserie like hours after we did the big join, and there was nothing but Clecos holding the tail and the uh, fuselage together. It made it so much easier to get all those rivets done. Yes, that was when you're going through and actually completing the big join and doing the rivet job, having it rotate just made that project so much easier. Yeah. So can you build an RV-14 without a rotisserie? Of course. Um, but I, I, I'm really excited to have it. I would not have uh, been able to help you as much if we didn't have yeah. it. <laughs> not in this state. <laughs> no, I, for sure. I mean, it's like we'll rotate it over, put uh, pillows down. We'll just be on our knees working on the airplane. Um, and um, it, it, I don't know. It, it's just so much nicer. Um, and we've got a lot of work done because of the rotisserie. So $200 at Harbor Freight, you know, maybe another $20 in miscellaneous uh, screws plus some scrap lumber. You know, most people are able to disassemble their crates and have all the lumber that they need. Uh, but for us, you know, we, we've collected a whole bunch of scrap lumber over the years. So um, have fun building your rotisserie. I hope this video helps. Uh, Try to include as much B-roll of um, how we hooked it in and what we did at different spots. Um, it's been on and off two or three times. We took it off to paint. We put it back on after the paint. We took it off for a little while while we we're working on the tail and some other things. Um, so um, I, I also like that when we're done with it, it gets out of the way. We didn't build this big contraption that now we got to figure out what to do with. Yeah. Like, yeah, once we get the wings off, it's like, what are we going to do with that wing cradle that we built? I have no idea. Bonfire? Nah, we're going to do a second build, so we probably yeah. should keep it. But uh, it'll end up being stored in the back of our hangar at one point. Um, so, uh, got questions? Put them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. And, uh, you know, if you need to see something specific, we can do our best to um, shoot it and send it to you. So thank you for joining us in 14 Victor Echo. See you next time.